In the death of the foe lies the resurrection of the faithful. Flavor text of Bishop of Rebirth. The River Heralds and the Sun Empire, the Brazen Coalition and the Legion of Dusk. On the continent of Ixalan, a battle wages between the four peoples for control over the land. The mythical golden city of Arazka is hidden in the jungle, and within lies the promises of power, riches, and immortality. Each of these factions will stop at nothing to claim this prize, and so explorers set out to uncover forgotten ruins and ancient treasures. The vampiric conquistadors of the Legion of Dusk exhibit all the qualities of valiant, noble knights, even as they dine on the blood of their enemies. Faster and stronger than any man, and possessing devastating combat skills, these dark paladins are among the greatest dangers one can encounter. The Legion of Dusk is not native to Ixalan. Rather, they hail from across the vast oceans, from the continent of Torazon. Here, armies of vampire knights assemble under the command of Queen Miralda and an expensive church, an unstoppable force these armies have swept over the continent, dominating it entirely. But in the distant past, vampires were but a figment, and Terezon was simply one country among many. The story of the Legion of Dusk, of their might and expansion, begins in a humble mountaintop monastery. Long ago, a holy artifact was left in the care of the monastery's custodians. This artifact, the Immortal Sun, empowered them and attracted a great deal of religious pilgrimage. Over the generations, worship of the Sun became commonplace, and the land became affluent thanks to its presence. With this affluence came jealousy and rival nations sought the power of the Immortal Sun for themselves. The king of another land, Pedron the Wicked, took his forces and stormed the monastery. The guardians of the artifact fought valiantly, but they were overwhelmed by Pedron's forces. The last custodian of the Immortal Sun, a woman named Alenda, was left for dead on the monastery floor. As Pedron's army marched away with their prize, a winged figure descended from the sky, claiming the immortal sun and carrying it off into the west. By the time Alinda had recovered, the artifact she dedicated her life to protecting was long gone. Still, her duties remained, and she took on an oath to not rest until the Immortal Sun was retrieved once again. Yet, before she could depart on her search, there was one matter she needed to attend to, slaying King Pedron. Yelinda would spend years scouring the land for any sign of the Immortal Sun or the winged creature that carried it away. She was not alone in this quest, for the region had become obsessed with recovering their divine artifact. Their zeal turned to blame, and conflicts erupted in the region over who was at fault for the loss of the Immortal Sun. Yet Alinda pressed on, eventually making her way to the coast and sailing beyond the horizon. Her search was proving fruitless, and over time, Alenda's resolve turned to desperation. In order to continue her quest, to seek the stolen sun, Alenda turned to dark magic. She gave up her very soul in order to become something dark, something sinister. Alenda became the first vampire 
and her quest continued. It would be centuries before Alinda returned to the nation of Terezon, and by then the people had long forgotten the immortal sun. The nation was instead overwhelmed by a conflict known as the Apostasine War. With the death of the previous king, the nation had been split into three, rallied under three separate claims to the throne. Skirmishes broke into battles, which erupted into all-out war, a war that would go unresolved for centuries, with the descendants of the initial claimants carrying on the conflict. By the time Alinda had returned to the nation, it had been embroiled in this war for 300 years, and it was coming to an end. The apostasine princes were nearly victorious, but Alinda appeared, wreathed in a black shadow, and single-handedly turned the tide of battle. She overwhelmed the enemy's honor guard, causing the army to cut ranks and flee. After the battle had ended, Elenda confessed her vampiric nature to the monarch and the pontifex. Rather than seeing the transformation as a cursed existence, the Pope interpreted Elenda's vampiric state as one of pious sacrifice, a holy endeavor. In this manner, Elenda introduced the rite of redemption, the transformation from mortal into vampire to the nobles of Terezon. Stronger and faster than their human counterparts, these vampires bolstered the army and quickly turned the tides of war. It was not long before the apostasine princes were defeated entirely and the land was unified. But just as a vampire is never cured of their bloodthirst, the rulers of Terezon had not sated their desire for expansion. Though Elenda had disappeared, her legacy of blood remained, and it fueled a relentless conquest. United under an iron-fisted crown and an expansive church, the Legion of Dusk formed, composed of several knightly orders. Their march was relentless, and over the course of 400 years, the Legion's forces conquered much of the continent, renaming it after their nation of origin. What little holdouts that persisted would be crushed under the remorseless power of the Legion, and the survivors were forced to seek their freedom on the open seas. The power of the Legion had become absolute, their control over the land complete. But whispers found their way back to the church and crown. Whispers of a continent beyond the sea. Whispers of a golden city. Whispers of the immortal sun. The expeditions were sponsored, vessels prepared, and the conquistadors of the Legion of Dusk took to sea, sailing west to the continent of Ixalan. Outposts and forts were established, and the Legion gained a foothold in the land to begin their search for the Golden City and the Holy Artifact within. Some conquistadors took the journey to fulfill the demands of the crown, honoring their oaths to Queen Meralda. Others saw this as a holy journey, to retrieve the immortal sun and gain true immortality, freedom from their bloodthirsty existence. And others still saw this as an opportunity for glory, to once again wage war. After a bitter race against their rivals in the Sun Empire, the River Heralds, and the Brazen Coalition, the Legion managed to discover the Golden City of Arazka. Within, the Saint Alenda was found, but the true prize was lost. The Immortal Sun was taken by unknown forces, 
and the Sun Empire took control of the city. Saint Alinda, for her part, considered her oath fulfilled, and journeyed back to Terezon and began preaching the virtues of humility to a nation that had spent centuries devoted to conquest. Though the Legion of Dusk was not victorious in the race for the Golden City, they remain perhaps the mightiest force in the world. As vampires, the Conquistadors are blessed with speed and strength greater than any mortal, and these powers are supplemented by a skill set that makes them masters of conquest. The knightly orders of the Legion are trained in a variety of fighting styles, from mounted combat to mastery of the blade to expertise in anatomy, the Legion's warriors are a threat even to the mighty dinosaurs used by the Sun Empire. Blood is of extreme value to the Legion. They see it as the source of all life and treat it as a holy resource. Though they are filled with bloodthirst, the conquistadors of the Legion restrain themselves from drinking the blood of their citizens, even when it would be convenient. Instead, they gladly feast on the blood of their enemies, of heretics and outsiders. With this blood, they are revitalized, given new strength, which they see as proof of the righteousness of their actions. The Legion's reverence for blood results in their members occasionally partaking in what is known as a blood fast. Starving themselves, Legionnaires learn discipline and restraint. Sadly, these fasts can result in madness, and more often than not, members of the Legion will enter a blood-crazed state, attacking anyone in sight. Though it is easy to see the Legion of Dusk as being composed entirely of vampires, in reality, they employ a great deal of human aids. Sailors, craftsmen, and attendants all work alongside the vampiric paladins in their conquest, some even going on to take the rite of redemption themselves. The Legion of Dusk is vast, being made up of some of the mightiest beings on Ixalan. Though they were not able to regain the immortal sun, their thirst for conquest remains. They may yet turn their fangs on themselves in a frenzy, or they could expand out to conquer the entire world. Many possibilities exist, though they remain a story for another time. The Legion of Dusk was first introduced as the white-black faction of the Ixalan bloc. Mechanically speaking, they had no keyword tied to them, but they did care a great deal about token generation and management of life. New cards representing members of the Legion have popped up over time, such as Vito from Core Set 2021, and it's doubtless that these vampire paladins will appear whenever we make our return to Ixalan. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed, please consider leaving a like or sharing this video with your friends. If you subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell, you'll be alerted whenever I upload new videos. If you have a topic you'd like me to discuss, feel free to let me know in the comments section below. Finally, if you'd like to support me directly, well, I've created a Patreon for this channel. If you like what I do and want to help me out, go check it out. A link to it will be in the description below. Thanks again, and have a great day.